It might not look like it, but if you watch this video, you will be watching someone do something extremely hard. Let's talk about why and what I'm doing about it and some tips that help me and hopefully will help you too. One of the definitions of hard is something that is difficult to accomplish or resolve. And hard is subjective. I had someone leave a comment on one of my past videos, and I've had people say it to me in the past, is there anything you can't do? And my go-to answer is always, well, yeah, sure, there's all kinds of things I can't do. But the truth is, probably not many, with a few exceptions, and we'll get into that, and, it, and they relate to physical limitations. But it's not just me, it's you too. So what prompted me to make this video is some conversations I've had recently with some people that I love very much, and specifically some changes that I've seen in one of those people. Um, but first, let's talk about why this particular video is hard for me. Well, because of certain conditions that I suffer from, um, one of the symptoms of those is executive dysfunction. If you don't know what executive dysfunction is, I'll read the definition um, straight from Cleveland Clinic. It's a behavioral symptom that disrupts a person's ability to manage their own thoughts, emotions, and actions. So the aspect of executive dysfunction that I struggle with the most is getting things from here to here. Um, normal everyday conversations usually aren't an issue if I'm talking about something that I know very well I don't struggle too much, but to just sit and talk about a subject, this, it just about kills me. And I'm going to insert, for your amusement and for mine, at the end, a lot of these clips that I'm cutting out, just so you'll kind of get an idea of what I struggle with. There's a lot of this. and a lot of stumbling over words and starting over because my big mouth just can't keep up with my little brain. My brain moves at mock speed and getting it to slow down enough to express my thoughts is a huge, huge struggle for me. So, back to my original point. One of the changes I've seen in somebody that's dear to me um, and their I can't attitude has, has really inspired me. And it made me do a lot of self-reflection on why I get so angry when somebody says I can't. Um, because I always prided myself on never saying that. If you haven't noticed, and I know it's hard to tell, but you might have you might have picked up on it in some of my past videos. I'm fat. I'm really, really fat. Um, less fat than I was 130 pounds ago, but your girl's still fat. And so I've always been, obviously, in the society we live in, um, very insecure about my appearance but I've never been insecure about my abilities. I don't know where I got the confidence from. Um, I'm just happy to have it. But as I started thinking about it more, while I don't verbally say I can't, I've often lived my life and made decisions that reflect the fact that I think that I can't. 
Um, a perfect example is not starting some businesses that I've dreamt of starting. Um, because I came up with excuses not to. I never said I can't. I just didn't do it. And really, the words I can't are always followed by excuses. And that's just what I can't is, is an excuse in and of itself. So, my first tip for you is to stop making excuses and start making a plan. Now, you wouldn't go on a vacation without planning for it, right? So why would you try something hard that you've wanted to do but told yourself you can't? So if you're anything like me, there are a million and one things that you want to do. Pick one. Pick one. Start small, pick one and make a plan for how you're going to do it. So then your next excuse might be, well, I don't know how. I hear that a lot. Well, fortunately, we live in a world today where research is at our fingertips and education is free. So if you don't know how to start, start on the internet. Find a keyword, look it up, and get into that rabbit hole of research. There are endless opportunities to learn how to do something. You've got platforms like this, YouTube. You've got blogs. You've got Skillshare. You've got Instagram. You've got other online educational resources. There's truly no excuse in this day and age to not learn something that you want to learn. Tip number three, if you're anything like me, you want to do everything yourself. It is the hardest thing in the world for me to ask for help, but that's arrogant. It's arrogant and I'm hurting no one but myself by not asking for help when I need to. So humble yourself and ask for help. And if you don't know who to ask for help, start with anybody. Anybody you feel comfortable asking. And I guarantee you, if they can't help you, they can point you in the direction of somebody who can. And if all else fails, go to the description box, find my email address, and email me. I'm happy to help. One of the things that really drives me and has encouraged me to work on this communication is I love helping people. I love training people. I love watching people learn and accomplish and be unafraid. It encourages me to try things that I have not verbally told myself I can't do, but that I have proven that I think I can't do them by not doing them. Tip number four, find an alternative to physical limitations. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier about there's probably not a lot I can't do with the exception of physical limitations, but in many cases, there are alternatives. I'll give you an example, and it's an outlandish one and something I have no interest in, but it's something that I have like a half a percent knowledge on. Let's say I wanted to become a lineman, you know, the guy that gets up on the poles and fixes the wires when the storm goes out, that kind of thing. Let's say I wanted to do that. Could I put on a pair of boots and climb a pole? Absolutely not. I have two bad knees. I have one back surgery in the books already, two herniated discs, some iron deficiencies, a couple of other things that we're still investigating. Bottom line, no. But 
Could I get in a bucket, ride up to the wires and learn how to fix them? Yeah, I could learn it. I don't want to, and it might take me a really long time, and I might have to ask somebody to teach me something. In fact, I would have to ask for help to learn it, but I could learn how to do it. My point is, if there's something that you want to do badly enough, physical limitations or not, seek out an alternative to get it done. Whether it be asking for help or doing it a different way, you're not gonna know if you can until you try. That brings me to point five. There is no one right way to do anything. Some people will tell you there is, but there's not. You've heard the old saying, there's your way, there's my way, and there's the right way. Well, that's bull crap. Uh, you've also heard the saying, there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's the truth. I guarantee you that anything you want to try you can find a way to do it in your way. And if the end result works for you, then you did it right. So don't let anyone hold you back by telling you you're doing it wrong, including yourself. That leads me to tip number six, stop listening to other people. I had someone leave a comment on one of my videos that she wanted to hang pictures in a certain way in her house, but everybody kept telling her it was wrong and that it didn't make sense, it wouldn't look right. Bull crap. She wanted to do it. So I and another commenter encouraged her to. She did it and she reported back that she loved it. And when I read that comment, it just made me so happy because I've been there. I've let other people control my decisions. And it feels good to have the confidence to do something, even, no matter how small it is. If it's something that you've been afraid to do for whatever reason and you do it, it changes your whole outlook on yourself and gives you confidence to try the next thing. Which leads me to my next tip. I think we're on number seven now. And that is to let go of fear. If your fear is driven by what other people might think of you, let me clue you in on something. They think of you a lot less than you think they think of you. And that's a good thing. And to that point, if anyone tries to make you feel bad for something that you've tried or something you wanted to do or something you created, I can almost guarantee 100% of the time it's a reflection on them and what they think of themselves and not what they think about what you did. They're either having a bad day, they're jealous that they didn't think of it. They're insecure in their own abilities and they're projecting it onto you. Your responsibility in those situations is to control your reaction to it. No one can make you feel any way that you don't make the choice to feel. And if you do allow them to have that control over you, then ultimately it's on you and not on them. And that's hard to remember in the moment. Believe me, I know, it is so much easier said than done. But once you shift your thinking that way, it will make all the difference in the world in your confidence and things that you're willing to try. Now, if your fear stems from your feelings of yourself and you're afraid of failing and that it's gonna make you feel worse about yourself, well, let me tell you something. Not doing what you're afraid to do 
makes you feel worse about yourself than doing it and it not turning out the way you had imagined or hoped or dreamed or planned for. Trust me, this is another case of been there, done that. That leads me into my next tip, number eight, and that is to be fluid in your expectations. I'm one of these people who I get an idea in my head and I get hyper focused on it and I know exactly what I'm going to do. I know exactly the way it's going to go and then 98% of the time it doesn't. Where I have my greatest success is being flexible to change, to the idea of change, um, to the change of process. My next video that you'll see, I'm working on converting two IKEA dressers to an island for my kitchen. And I had it all planned out the way I was going to connect the two dressers together and do the trim and the molding. And once I started working on it, all that went out the door. And I adjusted to a better way, a way that would work. And it's turned out even better than I had planned. So be open to a change of plans. Be open to pivoting in a totally different direction. And don't hold yourself hostage to one idea or one thought or one course of action. All right, I've lost count on what tip number I'm on, but it will be somewhere around here listed. But that is to remember that virtually everything can be fixed. I said in another one of my videos that I've got my life motto from Andrea Pine and Prospect Home, a comment her husband made, do your best and caulk the rest. It, it is true. I, I stand by that 100%. If you're working on a project and you don't like how it's going or you're working your way through an idea and it doesn't turn out exactly the way you would planned and you can come up with an idea to change it, it can be fixed. One thing I love to do that I haven't done in years is paint. I'm not talking about painting walls, I'm talking about painting pictures. I have one that I showed in my hallway video. It's kind of like a folk art painting. Um, it's not very good. That's okay, because I enjoyed doing it. And I haven't painted in many years, but I would love to get back into it. But my point is, I have countless paintings that I've gotten three quarters of the way through, stopped, gessoed over everything and started from scratch. There are also paintings that I have completed. They're perfect at first blush. I go back, look, find something I hate, cover up that part, redo it. And I know that's a, a small example, but in the grand scheme of things, everything can be fixed. It might take longer than you planned, but it can be fixed. That leads me into my next point, point whatever, patience. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with the process. Don't hold yourself to such strict standards that you're setting yourself up for failure before you've even gotten good and started. Things take time. Reaching a goal or doing something that is new to you or learning a new skill, they all take time and you have to be willing to be patient. My next tip is obvious. We've all heard it. Practice, 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 practice. Um, you're never going to get good at anything without doing it repeatedly. And that's hard, especially when you are impatient and maybe things aren't progressing as quickly as you would like for them to. But 
depending on what it is you're trying to do, look for ways to practice that might not seem obvious. So for example, this. This is practice to me. But other ways I practice this are through, and have historically, is through my work. I've been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to train um, some of my own employees at the time and co-workers. So when I'm preparing for that, I make a concerted effort to recognize that this is a free opportunity to practice something that I struggle with. So look for unconventional ways to practice things that you're trying to improve at. And my last tip and the most important is to give yourself grace. I think we all tend to give others a lot more grace than we give ourselves. I know I certainly do. Um, I've had bosses tell me in the past, you know, Lee, when you mess something up, which I do a lot, or you make a mistake, I know that I really don't have to say much to you because you're going to beat yourself up way more than I ever could. And they're right. And I've always kind of prided myself on that, but that's not a really good trait to have. Being able to accept constructive criticism is a much more desirable trait to me than being known for beating yourself up. Um, I don't, I don't like that about myself and you know, that's a hard thing I'm working on. Um, I do take constructive criticism well, but I still beat myself up. So give yourself grace too, because you deserve it. I deserve grace. We all deserve patience and understanding and grace. And you owe that to yourself, just like I owe it to myself. All right, you guys. We did it. That's all I got for you. After I go and spend about 1100 hours editing this, maybe I can get it all into something coherent that will get my point across better than my big mouth can. I want you to know that I appreciate very much you watching this video. If you have, um, if you're a returning subscriber, I appreciate you. If you would consider subscribing and liking, um, I would appreciate you as well. This has been very, 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 very hard for me, but I appreciate the opportunity to practice and your patience with me allowing me to practice. And I hope, I hope that I've encouraged you in some small way even if I can just convince one person to remove I can't from their vocabulary, I will consider this a success. Because remember, and we'll call this the final, final tip, there is no such thing as failure unless you don't. The only way you fail is if you don't try. I can't equals failure. So get it out of your vocabulary. Figure out a way to turn your I can't into I will. So I won't be doing these kinds of videos very often, but I do hope that we can use this time as an opportunity to encourage each other. Um, leave a comment and let me know if I have in some small way encouraged you to try something, no matter how big or small, um, that you've been putting off trying for whatever reason, for whatever reason you've told yourself you can't. Let me know if I've convinced you to say, I will. If you see someone, leave a comment on this video or any others that you're watching where you can tell that they're struggling to try something new or they're asking for help, 
use that as an opportunity to encourage them. So I hope you will consider subscribing and coming back and doing hard things with me, watching me learn how to do hard things, try hard things, encouraging me to try hard things, um, and have fun along the way. So like I said, stick around for a few more minutes and watch some of the, the outtakes. It doesn't embarrass me to put these in at the end because it's it's who I am. It's, it's a struggle I have. I'm not ashamed of it. Um, and if it helps somebody to, if nothing else, feel not alone, um, so be it. All the better. Because it takes all kinds to make the world go round and we are all connected. We're all in this together, you guys. So until I see you back again, I hope you all have a great week and go out there and try something hard. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Whether you realize it or not, you are witnessing So hard is subjective. Um, hard is subjective. It's something that is... A, one of the definitions of hard is something that is... I... <clears throat> this, this, this. And if you don't know what this executive dysfunction is, it's a behavioral symptom that disrupts a person's, and I'm reading from my phone, a behavioral symptom, <clears throat> Back to my original point. Um, so right now it's hard to tell, but I'm a big girl. Your girl's thick. She's fat. Um, about my physical. this um, any <sighs> so you've got And if I can't help, be unafraid. You can find a way to do it in your way. Any way that you don't choose to feel.